please join me in welcoming who's already on stage, Juan Benet. It's super exciting to be here, and uh, I hope you know that I never travel anywhere without my biscuit. Uh, if you don't have a Phil Corgi, you should totally get one. They're awesome. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about the Filecoin master plan. Um, and first off, I just want to thank the entire organizing team of Phil Singapore. It is amazing to be here. This is by far the largest Filecoin-oriented event ever. This is super, super amazing. So a huge round of applause for um, IPFS4, the Filecoin Foundation, and all of the event folks that are involved in, in putting this together. Um, thank you so much. Uh, as you know, Web3 is about bringing trust to internet interactions. We do this by adding verifiability to our transactions. We want verifiability in our financial instruments, like currencies and, other, and so on. We also want verifiability in the underlying primitives of the cloud. We want verifiability in our storage. We want verifiability in our computation. We want to know that we can trust the systems, and we want cryptography, distributed systems, and game theory to provide that foundation. Um, we want to move away from trusting corporations or trusting um, various different groups that might change their minds, uh, and instead really have a system that you can depend on and you can trust. Um, there are many different kinds of disruptions to internet service going on right now. Um, you probably saw the shutdown of the internet in Iran in the last few days. Um, that's, that can happen anywhere. And just think of your day-to-day -day -day lives and think of your interactions, think of the software that you use. Think of all of the applications you use to keep in touch with your loved ones, with your friends, with your family, um, with everyone uh, in your work, in your organizations, and so on. Imagine that overnight, all of that is gone, and you can interact. So humanity today has moved primarily to communicate through digital means. And if that gets removed, then most of your rights and most of your capabilities as a human um, get taken away. So it's really important to build a foundation, a robust foundation for humanity's information, um, so we can build our applications with a much, much more uh, rights-respecting and user-respecting system. Uh, it's really great to be here um, talking, talking about this um, uh, in general. So now we have a problem, which is that Web3 doesn't yet scale to meet the demands of Web2 applications. So uh, Bitcoin came first, and then Ethereum and many other uh, systems emerged uh, that each brought new capabilities. And everyone's been working on scalability, but we're very far away from being able to reach the kind of scalability that you need to be able to build um, modern web applications. Uh, when you think about things like TikTok or um, Twitter or WeChat or uh, Netflix and so on, these applications require vast amounts of transactions, vast amounts of interactions, so uh, an enormous amount of storage, an enormous amount of compute. No blockchains today can do that kind of processing. Now, with Falcon, we have the storage capability to do that, so we've got you know, a check mark on that, but we still don't have the, the computational capabilities to get there, and I want to talk about that today. Now, it's critical to get that scalability so that Web3 can cross the chasm, so that we can get all these applications, and so that your day-to-day -day apps can now use uh, Web3. A lot of people ask me, when will consumer applications finally arrive in Web3? When will we get social and so on? And that's the gap. The gap is that we have to have um, massive scale, a massive scale computing platform, not just with storage, which we already have, but, not, but in addition to that, um, super fast delivery of the content, like sub-second delivery, uh, which we're working on, and computational uh, pipelines on top. So that's the, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So the mission of Filecoin is to provide that decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. It's the storage network of Web3, uh, and as you know, it's crypto-powered. So this is the Falcon master plan. Step one is to build the world's largest decentralized storage network. Step two is to use that network to onboard and safeguard humanity's data. After we've uh, onboarded the data and safeguarded it, then we can add software and, and to bring online computational pipelines to that data. That's what's going to enable these kinds of web scale applications that I'm talking about. So the good news is, step one, we've done that. Uh, you know, huge round of applause to the entire Falcon community for the last few years. This took a huge, huge amount of work from tons of teams, ton, uh, tons of operators around the world to build the largest decentralized storage network. Uh, you know, on the order of over 4,000 storage providers around the world have onboarded about 17 exabytes of capacity globally. This is an enormous amount uh, of storage. 
Uh, and geographically, geographically, the SPs are growing across many regions. Uh, the fastest growing ones right now are North America, growing over 90% in, in the latest period here, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Korea. So it's really exciting to see all this growth. Uh, it's one of the common questions that I get. Uh, and the number of storage providers taking verified deals, uh, actually starting to use that capacity for data, has grown 4x uh, just in this year alone. So it's super exciting to see uh, that work from SPs. And accelerators and hardware providers are making it dramatically easier uh, to add all of, all of this, um, to become a storage provider. So if you are interested in getting started, you can uh, go to ESPA and uh, I look at the content on YouTube and sign up for the accelerator program and join it. Um, and get in touch with hardware providers that can uh, make, your, make your operations easier. Now, one really important thing that the Falcon community has been working on is to become the greenest storage network in the world. Not just the greenest decentralized storage network, but the greenest, the greenest storage network completely. Uh, we want to achieve this by being able to measure all of the energy use of the network and being able to offset all of that energy use by using um, renewable energy credits. So being able to know that the energy that we consume in a particular grid is coming from uh, renewable energy providers in that place. And we don't want to just get to uh, carbon neutral. We want to get to massively carbon negative. We want to be able to have Filecoin in a region be pulling carbon out of the air, like help decarbonize. So RECs are not going to be sufficient for that. We want to use some of the best uh, carbon offsets and so on. We want Filecoin to lead the way in crypto to decarbonize crypto and that way decarbonize the world. Now, the thing that a lot of the community is focused on right now, um, this year has been a, a huge part of this, uh, and this will continue into, into next year, is the data onboarding pipelines. Um, so this is, you know, kind of last year we weren't very focused on this. We started getting focused on this this year, and you can see the massive growth rate. Now we have over 192 petabytes of live data. That's an enormous amount of growth going from 22 petabytes uh, to 192 in the last nine months. It's super massive. Um, now you can see the graph. The, my favorite graph in the entire Falcon Network right now is that bottom graph. Um, that shows the, the growth rate of the deals being added into the network. We're now at, at about one to two petabytes onboarded per day. That's super exciting. So this is the largest centralized storage network by far, and it's starting to become competitive with large-scale centralized cloud providers. Um, we still have a few orders of magnitude to go, but this is, this is already pretty amazing. And it's worth noting that this is already the scale um, larger than many uh, centralized cloud storage companies. So the smaller ones, like we've kind of beaten, uh, beaten them already. So, uh, but however, 200 petabytes uh, is still very far away from uh, 17 exabytes, so there's an enormous amount of capacity still to fill up. Uh, so if you have data, uh, bring it to Falcon. Falcon wants to uh, store it and save it for you. So the amount of data onboarded this year, um, again, has exploded, and it's really interesting to see all the different SPs involved in doing this. We, we're seeing storage happening across the network in, in all the continents, and so it's great to see that people's data is getting safeguarded in, in all the different regions. Now, we onboard the data through uh, basically two class of strategies. One is a set of on-ramps that are targeted at specific user segments. So think of a particular vertical, a particular set of use cases. Use an on-ramp for that use case. Um, and then second, by using the Falcon Plus economic structure. Uh, that is what makes it possible to have incredibly cheap prices uh, and get to you know, below 0.1% you know, of the cost of S3 and so on. So here's an example of an on-ramp, Web3.storage. It has about 20,000 users storing over 50 million Web3 objects, and that's, all, that's an enormous amount of, um, of usage already. And this is also powering NFT.storage, which has 60,000 users storing 90 million NFTs. And so these are specific on-ramps designed to uh, support a particular data storage in a particular use case. So you want to build, the reason this works so well is that you can build a specific product for a specific audience, build the right feature set, build the right documentation, the right communications, the right branding for that market, um, and have a team work to make sure that the needs of that market are served well, while in the bottom they can work on the, on the Filecoin interfaces and so on. And, in, and like NFT storage is using Web3 the storage, Web3 the storage could power many other kinds of applications like this. So I'm looking forward to seeing things like video.storage and music.storage and so on. Uh, we've also seen the rise of many different kinds of, um, of applications, like personal storage applications, 
video, music, and media apps, uh, metaverses and game applications. This one's particularly exciting to me. You, you can have entire rooms and entire worlds um, in 3D being moved around, being stored and moved around through Falcon and IPFS. <clears throat> and then you can take that entire world and, and use it as an NFT and you can either um, sell it or, or think in the future rent it or token gated or things like that. So this is an open metaverse where everybody, all the creators, all the participants and so on, can participate in the economic activity of that metaverse as opposed to all of that being um, leached away by, by a specific single centralized cloud provider. Uh, in addition to applications like this, we, all, we have hundreds of large-scale data sets stored um, on the network. There's many new data sets coming online all the time. It's, it's pretty exciting. Um, one of the things that I'm going to be looking out for later this year and next year is different kinds of interfaces coming online to be able to view all of this data and later on being able to compute on this, which, which is going to be really cool. Uh, I want to give you an example of the kind of data that is, uh, that is coming to Filecoin. This is a massive scale um, uh, experiment that is going to uh, capture all this important neutrino data and it's going to generate, I think, petabytes scale um, of data and all of that data is going to go into, into Filecoin thanks to uh, seal storage. So that's an example of a storage provider going out there, finding um, a particular set of customers, uh, talking to them about Filecoin, uh, and being super successful in winning a contract and winning a bid uh, because they can offer dramatically more affordable storage than centralized cloud providers. But in addition to that, they can provide verifiable proofs that the data is being stored and it's being stored in particular places. Like that is um, extremely powerful. That's a, that's a primitive that the cloud does, the centralized cloud doesn't have. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that are coming online. Uh, and this also includes uh, civic and open uh, data for, for cities. So think of, um, there's already the city of New York that is uh, putting a, a project with a lot of open data on Filecoin. Um, and there are many other civic data sets that are coming online. This is particularly interesting and valuable because government data is part of a, a commons. Uh, we as, as a people in a society uh, generate a lot of data. It's our data together. Um, and we want that data to be safeguarded and accessible to all of us um, and not be uh, kind of paywalled behind a particular corporation or something like that. So it's a, a extremely exciting to, to bring uh, things like Filecoin, which are effectively digital public utilities, uh, and marry those with the public open data of governments. <clears throat> Filecoin can be the, the best um, place for this, this kind of data. So it'd be super exciting to see if, what data from, um, from Singapore could be, could be added, to, added to Filecoin. Now, a lot of this is powered thanks to the, the Filecoin Plus economic structure, which enables that capacity uh, that is unused to be sold for either extremely cheap prices or potentially negative prices. That's a super exciting, um, exciting thing. Uh, and, and by the way, huge thanks to all of the notaries that work super hard to enable this program to work. There's a whole decentralized network of notaries uh, that are participants in the, in the Filecoin economy. Um, that are checking and verifying that that data um, is coming from the, uh, good users and, and, and so on, and is, is a key component of making this work. Uh, so the Falcon Plus economic structure enables groups to be able to take that extra capacity and not just sell it for cheap, but like I said, provide negatively priced storage. That's a super exciting new primitive, never before seen in, in any other network. So this is kind of like when oil prices become negative. Uh, but this can be extended, this, this condition can be extended um, until that capacity is filled up. So my claim is that while there's a significant amount of open storage on Filecoin, um, not only can you get extremely cheap prices, you could potentially even get paid for bringing your data to Filecoin. So think of this as an enormous, powerful incentive for the Filecoin network to bring a lot of data to it. This is how, you, uh, in, in the crypto world, we have to think with economic incentives because you don't have centralized BD and marketing teams that you can just go, um, kind of organize in order to go, go do things. You have to create incentive structures that cause networks to behave this way. Uh, so it's pretty exciting to see, see this kind of growth. Now, one, one thing I'm really excited about is data DAOs. So think of uh, groups of curators of data that are either creating new data or collect, collecting data or curating what's valuable or operating on that data, like transforming it, cleaning it up, um, relating it to other data, or are running computations at large scale in some important data set, or want to govern the data use of that data, uh, or want to organize the membership and access rights for a particular piece of data, or want to just pool together a set of resources and share the costs and the, and the burdens of maintaining, maintaining that data, 
All of this kind of interaction that today requires significant coordination and contracts in kind of regular law could be organized by, by the DAO tooling uh, that the blockchain world has, has explored. And so this is a super exciting um, thing where I think uh, we're gonna be able to create these primitives on the network um, where you can have entire communities built, building um, these communal data sets uh, to organize them together. Uh, one of the things that um, a number of us are working on is to get the, the uh, retrieval latency of Filecoin down to sub-second so it feels like uh, getting data from a normal, um, normal service. This is uh, something that we hadn't focused on in the last few years. Uh, now we're, we're working on it, and it's super exciting uh, to see many teams working on this, this particular problem. Um, one team that I'm uh, spending a fair amount of time with is the Saturn Network, uh, and th though this is uh, not live yet, I've seen some really awesome demos of uh, already getting like super fast uh, delivery with nodes all over the world. And I think this is going to be uh, shipping sometime in, in, in Q4, so keep your, keep your eyes out. If you're a retrieval markets uh, provider or, or interested in this, um, uh, definitely go, go, to, go to the site and, and um, think, look at how you can get involved. Uh, now, another area where that's, gonna, that's helping bring a lot of the data into the network is to support the creation of new applications. Uh, and we do this by building a very rich and robust uh, startup ecosystem around Filecoin. Uh, and we do this through uh, hackathons and other kinds of uh, ways to onboard and support builders that are creating new applications. So there's a whole um, large-scale effort to provide support to a lot of these hackathons, organize events like this. And I'm super happy to report that, that in the last um, few years, like 7,000 people have built close to 3,000 projects at hackathons um, using Filecoin or IPFS. And, and so we're aiming to reach you know, over 3,000 this year, and next year there'll be a whole range more. So this is a super important um, uh, component of the, uh, of the network because this is what enables a lot of new builders to build applications, get the support they need, and scale. Uh, today, you, you, there's already many of uh, groups who started off in these hackathons and now have uh, seed or Series A funded startups, and it's super exciting to see that level of growth happen in just a year. Uh, so one of the other components here is that we support the development of, of a lot of these startups um, by working with accelerator programs out there that can support the, um, the growth of those startups initially as they're trying to figure out their product, they're trying to get product market fit, um, and so on. And there's, again, over 176 startups uh, from, coming from 21 cohorts just in this program alone. Now, this is not the only pathway for startups. Many other startups come through other pathways, but this is uh, super exciting to see that, that growth. Uh, and so overall, in, around the network, we have over 450 funded startups across many stages. Um, everything from you know, early projects to like, early grant-funded projects to now proper accelerator uh, businesses or seed-funded companies, Series A companies, all the way to B, C, and D. There's you know, several you know, Series C or D level uh, companies in the network, which is uh, super, super cool. Now, I want to... Uh, so that's kind of what the whole network is focused on today, onboarding and safeguarding uh, the data. Now I want to talk about what a small part of the network is working on, which is what sort of comes next, and that's to bring the computation to the data and enable large-scale web applications. Uh, so this is a snapshot of the um, Falcon Core Improvements Roadmap. Um, you, FEM is one of the things that a lot of people are probably pretty excited about. I'm wearing an FEM shirt. You'll probably hear a lot about it today. Uh, that's one of the, the uh, really key areas of development, but there's a lot of other stuff uh, going on. So now, um, FEM is going to bring smart contracts and programmability to Filecoin directly so that you can build all kinds of applications and things like layer two networks. Uh, there's, uh, there's been a ton of progress on this already. Uh, already we went through the first major upgrade um, that rolled up into the, into, the, into the network that is powered by FEM. And there's a, a build, an early builders program with, with 25 teams already building on a testnet. And I think the next wave of, of, um, of builders is going to open soon. So uh, if you want to build an application in FEM, uh, reach out to the, that group. And be ready to, to launch uh, your, your programs and applications in Q1 when, when FEM ships to the world. Uh, one other thing that I'm super excited about is that FEM is going to enable large-scale computation to come to Filecoin. Um, that large-scale computation is what's going to enable the applications that I described earlier. Uh, so you first bring a lot of storage, you add programmability in, into the chain, and that enables you to do the large-scale computation that powers Web3 applications. Sorry, the, the, powers Web2, the, the kind of applications that Web2 is built on, but bring that into Web3. 
Uh, and so you can think of Filecoin as an L1 that is going to be a, an excellent home for L2 compute networks that use many different kinds of um, uh, uh, cryptographic primitives or protocols and so on to achieve their, their computation. Think of many, there, there's going to be many different compute networks. Uh, there's good reasons for this. There's very hard trade-offs. And we want Filecoin to be an excellent home to all of them. Uh, and so we're doing a lot of work to make it way easier to build these kinds of networks. We're building a lot of tools to support uh, uh, builders. Um, and we want to connect all of the data to, uh, to these kinds of networks. Uh, we, we're also working on a number of bridges to the other, um, the other blockchain networks. Uh, a lot of the, the, the blockchain space has been focused on scaling like the, the on-chain computation and creating new kinds of smart contracts and so on. And we want to be a great home for the data for all of these networks. We want to build uh, connectivity between uh, across this entire space so that a smart contract anywhere across the Web3 space can, inter can store data on Filecoin, can uh, retrieve that data and compute on it, or, or cause computation to happen, um, and that is easy and seamless across, uh, across the environment. Filecoin is the only network that scales to exabyte level of, of storage, um, and so we, we, uh, we, we already have seen many applications across the entire Web3 ecosystem using Filecoin. We want to that, make that dramatically easier once, once that VM lands. Uh, and then one snapshot towards scalability. Uh, co scaling the computation um, off-chain and so on is one thing, but we also want to be able to scale the computation on-chain. And so this is one key component to the future of Filecoin, to be able to do um, large-scale uh, computations organized within the security parameters of, of the blockchain. So that means we, we want to hit something like billions of transactions per second or trillions of transactions per second over the next three to five years. Uh, not just, you know, like right now, the, most of the Web3 space is shooting for hundreds of thousands or maybe a million. We want to go to billions or trillions of transactions per second. So that's, you know, three or six orders of magnitude larger. And we also want to have chains with extremely fast finality. You, you can't run um, life-critical applications if, you know, it takes seconds to, to clear certain transactions. And you can't run life-critical applications if you're not partition tolerant. So you need blockchain systems that will continue operating even if your connectivity to the rest of the world, like what is happening in Iran right now, um, happens. And you want to be able to continue transacting, continue uh, sending messages, continue interacting with, with participants. So that's, you know, we're building towards that future. And so if we can put all these things together, if we can uh, bring that, uh, the next generation smart contracts into, into Falcon, if we can bring the large-scale data pipelines uh, to the network, and if we can scale uh, the computation across, then we can start doing massive-scale data science on, on, the, on the network, on the data that's being brought into the network, and build the kind of applications that I was talking about before. Once we do all of these things, we can get to, uh, finally, Web2 competitive applications that have a completely Web3 infrastructure underneath the hood that are completely verifiable um, and where you don't have to trust any kind of intermediary. So that's sort of the, the long-term vision of Falcon to be able to get here uh, through these three steps, building the world's largest decentralized source network, uh, amass the, the world's hardware into, um, into one network, then uh, onboard and safeguard humanity's data into, into that network. That's what we're focused on right now. Uh, and then after that, bring compute to the data at massive scale and be able to empower large-scale web applications uh, to really hit the, the level of scalability that the, that the cloud needs. Now, I want to uh, thank the whole community. There's been uh, an explosion of events this year. Uh, it's been fantastically fun to uh, spend time with everybody around the world. We went to Phil Austin, then Phil Toronto, then Phil Seoul, then Phil Singapore, uh, and next up is Phil Lisbon. Uh, it's really exciting to be here uh, in, in this amazing city. It's been, we've had a tremendously warm welcome. Uh, you know, really thank you to, to Singapore for uh, welcoming, welcoming all of us. Uh, it is fantastic to be in this uh, amazing um, city with, with such a, a wonderful culture and, and, and um, a, a super amazing um, history. Uh, it's really been great to just get to know people here and get to talk about the future and, and so on. Uh, and it's, you know, there's an amazing lineup um, the, the rest of today and tomorrow. There's a ton of side events, so, so definitely check out the schedule. There's a lot of amazing things going on. Uh, tons of amazing people from the, the Falcon ecosystem and beyond uh, are here. You know, really thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, one plug to, uh, there's, there's even like startups in, in, a, in a demo day uh, that is happening later today, which is, which is super cool. Uh, and one big plug for Phil Lisman uh, in, in October. So, Thank you for, for coming here. Or if you are watching this in a recording, come join us in Lisbon in 
in late October and early November. There's going to be a ton of activity uh, in Lisbon. There's going to be an enormous amount of, of um, projects, and, and the, the entire Web3 space is going to basically get together in Lisbon in October and November. Uh, so really uh, hope to see you there. Now, I want to finish my talk with one ask for the whole community. Uh, just right now, let's focus on growing the network. Uh, and so my ask for you for the next two quarters, so for Q4 and Q1, is to bring one more person into the network each month. So just think about, like, you know, work on bringing one more person into the network. Could be a storage provider or a trio provider, somebody, a user, uh, somebody providing services, a vendor, somebody organizing events, someone building a community. Just bring one more long-term member of the community per month. If we all do this, if we just bring one more person per month, and we get into that habit together, this is going to grow exponentially really fast, and, and Popcorn is going to become the, the largest community uh, in the network. So just focus on doing this. Uh, I'm going to, once FVM um, comes out, I'm going to build a smart contract where we can like, check that everyone's doing this. Uh, now, um, thank you so much for, for coming today. This is, again, this is the Falcon Master Plan, and yeah, excited to be here. <laughs>